Hello everyone and welcome to the second set of the series. Um, in this series we're going to cover all the basic kicks, intermediate and some of the advanced kicks in our system of Hapkido Blend. Um, before we actually start, I want to tell you a little bit of, a, of the history of um, you know, what, how we look at kicking. To, for us, uh, for me especially, kicking is uh, only a piece of a puzzle called being a good martial artist. I was brought up in the Korean martial arts, which was strictly all kicks, 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 kick, kick, kicking is everything. And I've, uh, and I've, you know, kind of educated myself that you know, kicking is only, like I said, a small piece of a puzzle called being a good martial artist, and that has to be to do with range. So I want to be able to fight far away. I want to, you know, come to the kicking range. I want to come to the trapping range. I want to come to the punching range. I want to know joint locks, and I want to definitely get to the ground and, you know, do grappling. The grappling is one thing that we did not cover in, in this series, and the reason for that is, one, um, you know, traditional Hapkido and stuff never had grappling or ground fighting. But, you know, I have chosen to add that to our system, but I didn't want to be the one to talk about it or even teach it because there's so many better people and so many better point of references out there that you can actually get to. I've been fortunate enough to um, study with, as far as grappling, with the Gracies. With the, and uh, I think their curriculum is one of the best ones out there. I think Horian has done a wonderful job with their curriculum. I've studied with the Machados, which are you know wonderful, great people. Um, but the one person that really opened my eyes to the art of grappling was Mr. David Myers and John Will from Australia. But David really opened my eyes into what grappling is all about and what it can do and how it be can become a game. So again, these are the s specific pieces of puzzle to being a complete martial artist. Right, so I want to make sure I acknowledge um, uh, David for sharing his art with me. Uh, some of the people that really had to, a lot to do with my, um, the whole idea of kicking was one of my first point of references, of course, was my teacher, you know, Master Sexton, which I owe you know, everything to him. But few people have had incredible influence on my kicking. And one of them was uh, Stuart Kwan, who unfortunately has passed away, but Stuart was one of the first ones when I saw him doing the competitions and stuff. His kicks you re really made me have an experience every time I watched him kick. And uh, so I was lucky enough, to, unfortunate enough, to actually study with him for a while before he passed away. And then another person, which wa was you know, one of the prettiest kicker ever, is, is you know, Master Simon Ree, who uh, we actually lucky enough to, have to be in the same town and uh, one of the prettiest kickers there is. And through him, I met another gentleman, Master Hosek Pak, which was a Tang Soo Do master, and which really introduced me to a whole different level of kicking. Um, and I was fortunate enough to demonstrate that in my first Panther series but that was developed you know, over 20 years ago. Anyway, so the, the concept that we're gonna talk about today that has to do with kicking and being a total, you know, into the totality of being a good martial artist is um, what I learned from my teacher who used to always tell me, get out of your nine dots, get out of your, get out of your nine dots. And that's what the Team Karate Center is, which, which is my school, what the logo is all about. And you, you see that TKC logo and you see the boxes. So I want to introduce you to that concept really quick. And what that is, is I, I do this often to my students. So imagine if there's nine dots in the shape of a square. And I challenge my students all the time, and I go, okay, I want you guys to connect all nine dots together with four straight lines without taking the pen off the, off the board. There are no tricks. You don't have to retrace, and, you know. And, uh, and I kind of pre-frame them with the idea of the box, and I ask everybody to do it. And, you know, 99% of people can't do that, right, to be able to connect the lines. And because everybody thinks, like, well, you know, there's four, how do I get the center one? And they have many, many different versions of it. All right, so I, and I challenge you at the same time to stop this DVD, actually try to do it yourself. And you see it's pretty hard to do. But anyway, the answer to that is, it, it is really a powerful concept. And the only way to truly to connect all the dots together is to get out of the nine dots and think outside the square, right? So the idea will be, so be one, two, three, and four. So this will be number one, this will be number two, this will be number three, and this will be number four. So it, again, this is more of a symbol of our system, of our logo, how a, a man, a woman, and a child can kick out of their square. So whenever you feel yourself that you're trapped or you don't know what to do, 
get out of your nine dots. One of the great examples of that is from a, a Bible story. I think it was a King Solomon, you know, during years and years and years ago where there was no DNA testing or anything like that. I guess there was two women who, uh, who, want to, who said that this particular baby is theirs. And no judge could figure out, well, who really, who, this baby, who, which woman does it belong to? All right. So they went through all these people and stuff. Nobody could figure out because they both women were insisting that this is their baby. And it got to King Solomon and, and you know, the king was, you know, a, a truly a leader who could get out of this nine dots, said, oh, I can, hand, you, know, you know, solve that mystery really quickly. And they're like, what? He goes, bring the ladies here, bring the baby. And they brought the baby and, and he told them, great, you guys both say this is your baby. So it's very easy to solve. So bring me a sword. And he asked why. He goes, well, I'm going to cut the baby in half and I'll give one half to this lady and, and half to this lady. And of course, only the true mother would give up their own child. Okay, so they, they could save the baby and only the true, the true mother would step forward and say, no, 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 don't do that. It's okay. Give it to the other lady. And that's how he found out this was a true mother, right? So to me, that's a perfect example of getting some, somebody getting out of their nine dots, right? Because we're, not, we're so conditioned into our system, you know, Taekwondo, Hakido, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, whatever it happens to be. But once in a while, you want to be able to break out of this limitation to think outside, right? And I truly think the opportunities and, and, and the gifts that come with stepping out of the nine dots, it's invaluable. So with that, I'll leave you to the experience um, of all the kicks in our system.